I'm gonna show you why the Lakers are built for the finals. You'll find out why even with their LA counterpart looking dangerous. Hey! And the small ball Rockets attempting to revolutionize basketball, it'll be a nightmare for teams trying to take four wins in the playoffs against the 2020 Lakers, which will all lead to my prediction for how special this spring could be for Showtime 2.0. Before matching them up with their two biggest conference rivals who are currently looking dangerous and seeing the number one factor making the Lakers their beastly selves, it's time to end the narrative that they have thin depth. Starting with the man who I shamefully forgot about on my undrafted list, Alex Caruso, he gets sarcastic MVP chance, but he's got the second highest defensive real plus minus at shooting guard behind Gary Harris, and in just 18 minutes per night, averages over a steal per game. I guess his defensive dominance made me forget he was undrafted, but Caruso isn't just the memed goat, he's got great strength for his position and has a relentless combination of persistent energy and awareness, plus of course those patented hops, which make him a serious defensive asset, while the athleticism and illustrious dribbling ability on the other end allows him to find easy lanes to the rim, making him a valuable slasher. On the season, Caruso has the best net rating of any Laker and is ninth in the league overall in that stack category. Moving to the middle where skinny Dwight, who's what the 2020 version of Dwight Howard's been known on his channel as, is looking like the prime Orlando edition of himself in LA. He's leading the league in field goal percentage, he went to the dunk contest, put on a Superman cape, and his numbers per 36 minutes reflect what he did in his prime, in which he became a three-time defensive player of the year, a two-time block and five-time rebounding champion, along with an eight-time NBA All-Star and All-NBA player. For the Lakers to have his springy rim protecting and rebounding presence and pick and roll option is a blessing for LeBron, but specifically the best big man in our league, Anthony Davis, who Howard relieves off the bench for just under 20 minutes, keeping AD fresh for the fourth. Kyle Kuzma struggled to stay consistent with his jumper, but the star stretch big production he can display when he gets going can be something special. His rookie breakout year after being a second round pick helped him give the Lakers enough respectability to sign the best free agent in the NBA, and he's the one youngin the GM hasn't traded. If he could somehow regain the beginner's mentality that allowed him to be a consistent weapon from distance to space out the floor, opponents are in trouble. Kyle's ego maybe has rightfully taken a hit with his decreased role and therefore points per game, but if he just understands that he just needs to keep a confident and consistent stroke while staying focused defensively, he's a damn impressive role player, and if he doesn't show up and produce the way he can, recent pickup Markeith Morris will be right there to snatch his minutes. Outstanding job to pick up Markeith from Rob Palinka. Morris helps with the internal competition and is shooting just under 40% from three-point range on the season. Rounding out the depth, there's everything you need to make a deep run into June if they can execute. Deep playoff experience, perimeter defense, and shooting around two of the top five players in the world. In the starting five, there's Avery Bradley, who's shockingly regaining his status as an elite point and shooting guard stopper, as many forget the 29-year-old was all-defensive first team in 2016 with the Celtics. In 2020, the activity level intensity is back in Bradley's game, and from watching him stick with and block one of the league's fastest guards in D. Rose, contest an up-and-coming wing scorer in Shea Gilgis Alexander, bother a player with 8 inches of height on him in Danilo Gallinari, make a former MVP Russell Westbrook look silly and harass the elusive Damian Lillard, plus many other instances, it's clear Bradley's back as one of the league's top talents defensively, a factor rarely talked about in Lakerland, but a damn important one. Two-time champion Danny Green, who's still at 32 years of age, is an above-average perimeter defender and sniping artist. He'll always be a great locker room slash on-court leader, say what you want about him, but Danny Green's a winner and clutch shooter and a championship piece. And another champion, JaVale McGee, who's playing a somewhat similar role to what he did with the 2018 Championship Warriors team, playing just under 17 minutes per game. While off the bench next to the aforementioned Kuz, Dwight, and Caruso, there's yet another strong 3 and D and valuable perimeter defending asset in Contavious Caldwell Pope, who's definitely someone you can throw on someone like Harden or Kawhi for stretches just to give it a different look with his lockdown ability. Pope's averaging career highs in field goal and three-point percentage as well. The character and beautiful playmaking of Rajon Rondo, who's putting up the fourth best assist total per game among bench players. Lastly, the point guard's depth is secure with the under control ball handling plus championship experience, again, of Quinn Cook. And the locker room's kept loose with Jared Dudley, who's there to knock down the occasional three-pointer, but mostly there to dish out daggers on Twitter. 
Comparison to the Clippers, Rockets, plus the Lakers one-two punch breakdown and playoff prediction all coming up, but Big Man the First gets the shout out who answers last video's question saying he'd start a franchise with Brandon Ingram because he's playing at a near 50-40-90 level. For last year's top five winners, I've received three out of the five rewards, then I'm shipping them. Compete this year by leaving your take on the question coming up. We can't come close to ignoring that their LA rival, the Clippers, who've beat them twice this season already and have damn intimidating firepower offensively with the ability to give it to three elite creators down the stretch in Lou Williams and of course the Claw in PG. Given how Kawhi performed last season in the clutch, stopping the space Leonard is going to have for most teams will be impossible, but while this Clipper team will likely end the Clipper curse at some point this decade, as when including beastly bench big Montrez Harrell in the discussion, the Clippers have nearly four 20 point scores. But this season, here's what proves the Lakers have the pieces to ultimately get over the hump against a lethal Clipper attack. At every other position than the center and point guard spots, the Lakers have the more statistically valuable player than the Clippers this season. With defensive intensity rising in the late rounds of the playoffs, every team remaining in the final four has talented creators who can answer with buckets. Every year, it comes down to whose defense is the most collectively sound. The Lakers are most capable of locking up to get crucial stops more than maybe any other team in the league. Defensive real plus minus definitions in the bottom left of your screen, but at center, Zubac ranks the highest between the two teams, then at power forward with AD, small forward with LeBron, shooting guard with both Caruso and Danny Green, the Lakers have the more valuable defenders, while the point guard spots held down by the Clippers fiend Patrick Beverly. In the grinded out style the playoffs inevitably provides, as I said, the Lakers have the talent to fight over screens to neutralize elite spot-up three-point shooters Paul George and Lou Williams, and specialists like Landry Shamit. The Lake Show's next biggest threats being led by a motivated James Harden as confident as ever in his Rockets' chances. I'm just, I'm thrilled about what we have in the locker room. How confident are you that the path you're on now can lead to a title this year? I'm very, very confident. You Extremely think? confident. You yeah. think you're going to win it all? Yeah. As long as we stay healthy, obviously, every team feels that way. Um, so as long as we can stay healthy and uh, defensively be on a string, I think which we've almost gotten rid of, uh, we're going to be a tough challenge. A Russell Westbrook looking the best he's ever been in his career, and instead of playing a center, typical small slash stretch power forwards like P.J. Tucker, plus the recently acquired Jeff Green and Robert Covington, are boldly being trusted to fill out that position. Big time respect to Rockets GM Daryl Morey for the boldness he's shaking things up willing to try anything to win a title. And while Houston can space out the floor pretty well around a generational slasher but brutal distant shooter in Russ, the Laker bigs aren't only going to physically dominate Houston's centerless squad on the glass but chase them off the line with their lateral quickness and length. But even if Houston shooters catch a rhythm and Dwight and JaVale can't keep up, especially now with the 40% three-point shooting stretch big Markeith Morris on the squad who's a solid perimeter defender, the Lakers can counter the Rockets' rhythm with numerous small quick lineups of their own. LeBron's fallaway jumper in the post is looking pristine as Zero Dark 30 mode begins to set in for the King. This postseason, I expect nothing less than a record-setting unstoppable performance from King James one in which he reminds us all he's one of the top two players of all time. He's recently entered the MVP discussion as of late, cutting into Giannis's massive lead. I'd still give it to the Greek freak, although given that Braun's right behind Luka Doncic for the second most triple doubles in the NBA this season and is fueling LA to 47 wins with 20 games to play in the most dominant conference in basketball by far, the argument for Braun being the 2020 MVP is becoming more and more viable. However, before predicting LA's playoffs, Anthony Davis is the man who's made everything work for the Lake Show, taking the scoring pressure off of LeBron by displaying his typically polished postgame, consisting of overpowering spins, crispy fades, and then his ridiculous dunks after perfectly placed lobs. Davis is the leading scorer for the first seed in the West, and it's rewarding for both him and us fans to see the brow finally getting the chance to display his generationally great two-way play. Anthony's rim protection is the backbone to the third best defense in the NBA. 
You have to be wary at all times or AD's embarrassing you with stuffs in your face. It's that effort from Davis leading the Lakers' defense as a whole into the defensive powerhouse they've turned into this season. Combining his overall value with LeBron's MVP-type output, and you have what's one of the most dominant one-two punches ever assembled, a pick-and-roll-slash-pop-slash-slip that's going to ruin the confidence of teams game-planning for them in the playoffs. Don't forget LeBron sat on the couch watching Kawhi take over in the playoffs last year and threaten his shot at the NBA's throne. He's as hungry as ever to regain the status as undoubtedly the greatest in the game, and his offensive repertoire can back up that motivation. While right now I'd take the Lakers to come out of the West, it's way too early to make that an official prediction on their success, a full video predicting every team's playoff fate before the postseason will do that, but this Laker team's fully equipped to win their first championship exactly a decade after their last one in 2010. I'm predicting LeBron has his greatest postseason ever, but the Lakers' hard and hustle collectively is what drives them to their success. Stay tuned for more hot takes, predictions, lists, and stories every few days by splashing subscribe. You see the question for next vid shout out. This was D Flow. Check out some of my recent uploads, and I'll see you next video.